Well, new on Daybreak, former Indianapolis Mayor Greg Ballard is weighing in on a ballot question that's facing a lot of voters in Marion County. Election Day is one week from today, and late last night, Ballard announced his support for the mass transit plan. He tweeted, quote, it's time. Indy must move forward on this issue. Transit-oriented development and talent attraction are real, and they expand the tax base. And we covered the mass transit referendum yesterday in the first part of our Explaining Your Vote coverage. Voters will decide if expanding public transportation in Indianapolis is worth a 0.25% increase in income taxes. And Jessica Smith's detailed look at both sides of the issue is available right now at wishtv.com. The next installment of Explaining Your Vote begins right now. For almost two years, America's attention has been focused on the race for president. But there are more than two people on the ballot. Indiana needs a governor, mayors, lawmakers, judges, and more. Voters will have a direct say in some key questions facing our state. We told you yesterday about mass transit, and we'll be looking at taxes, schools, and then hunting and fishing today. In Indiana, the people that enjoy those traditions of hunting and fishing in the outdoors will always be guaranteed that. Where does this end? What, I mean, do we make golf a constitutionally protected activity? So while national shows focus on what's happening in Washington, we're turning our focus to Indiana. All this week on Daybreak, we are explaining your vote. Yeah, so this morning, we are looking at a public question all Indiana voters will see on their ballot. You'll be asked to decide whether the right to fish and hunt should be protected in the state constitution. Right, and there are strong arguments both for and against the amendment. 24-Hour News 8's Brittany Lewis has been looking into the amendment, what it would mean, and into its history. Now, we already know how a lot of Indiana lawmakers feel about this. Yeah, so this amendment is more than two years in the making. Lawmakers agreed to this in 2014 and 2015. Now the majority of the state's voters also need to agree to it in order for it to become part of the state's constitution. Those in favor say it's simple. This just guarantees hunting and fishing will always be a right in Indiana. Those opposed wonder if it's necessary and worry about what it could lead to in the future. First adopted in 1816 and then amended in 1851, Indiana's Constitution has seen many changes over its 200-year history. This year, you can decide whether it needs to change again. Every voter in the state will be asked, shall the Constitution of the state of Indiana be amended by adding a Section 31 to Article 1, which is the Bill of Rights, to provide that the right to hunt, fish, and harvest wildlife shall be forever preserved for the public good, subject only to the laws prescribed by the General Assembly and rules prescribed by virtue of the authority of the General Assembly, to one, promote wildlife conservation and management, and two, preserve the future of hunting and fishing. Those who want you to vote yes and those who want you to vote no both agree there is no current and specific threat to hunting and fishing in Indiana. Hunting and fishing in Indiana is under no threat of being eliminated and therefore as others have said this is a solution in search of a problem. No, nothing that I know of here. But those like State Senator Jim Toms in favor of a yes vote worry there could be threats to those outdoor activities down the line. I mean if we re just review our news articles and, and the stories that come up in our papers today, we, we read about things that none of us thought would have ever happened. So this is just sort of an insurance that in the future, whether it be a legislature or administrations or, um, or whatever, uh, on a whim decides that they want to uh, some way or another pass an ordinance or pass a law that could have a... Uh, a negative impact on those traditions. That's all this is doing is just ensuring that doesn't happen. Those in favor of a no vote, like Tim Maloney with the Hoosier Environmental Council, an organization focused on environmental issues and policies, worry what a yes vote could mean down the line. This trivializes the Constitution when you put in, um, continue to seek to add um, protections for activities that that don't rise to the level of the fundamental values that are protected in our our U.S. Bill of Rights and the Bill of Rights in the Indiana Constitution. And uh, you know, where does this end? What I mean, do we make golf a constitutionally protected activity? The Hoosier Environmental Council is also concerned about the possibility of unintended consequences. That uh, the state of Indiana's uh, ability to properly regulate not only fishing and hunting but uh, carry out all their 
uh, fish and wildlife uh, protection activities could be under a cloud uh, if those uh, reasonable um, regulatory activities are challenged in court. It has nothing to do with those agencies uh, and what they have been doing and what they will continue to do. Will our state's constitution change once more? The choice is yours. I did reach out to the DNR. They do not have a position for or against the proposed amendment. And in a statement said in part that the DNR's authority to manage fish and wildlife resources, which comes from the General Assembly and is spelled out in Indiana law, would not be impacted. But again, those who are against worry how any future regulation might hold up in court. Brittany, is this something in place in any other states? Yeah, so according to the National Conference of State Legislators, 19 states have an amendment like this to protect the right to hunt and fish. Mm -hmm. okay. And Kansas is also considering it this year as well. Okay, so Thank interesting. You. So we are, of course, going to continue to explain your vote all week long on Daybreak. Our team's putting together really detailed reports on different ballot issues, things like the one you just saw. And the goal is to give you all the information you need before you head to the polls so you're a confident voter. You'll be able to find every story we do this week in the Your Vote section of wishtv.com. So coming up tomorrow, Nina is actually looking into a proposed tax increase in a couple central Indiana communities. The money would go to schools, but the questions we're asking is, is this necessary? So Nina will have the full story tomorrow for you on Daybreak. Remember, Election Day is one week from today on November 8th.